Who are the other people? Where did they come from? And what is the history of one of their major festivals, Ogbe Chochozan? My guest is Professor D.E.K. Amenume, a professor of history, and he will give us the answers. Prof, it's good to see you. Yes, thank you very much. Let us start from the beginning. Um, who are the other people? Where did they come from? From Nigeria. Okay, when I talk about uh, the other people, I start with this idea or this that uh, there are two interpretations about uh, how mankind came to exist. The one by the religious people that God created uh, man full, well made. Mm -hmm. The other one is that uh, it was through <coughs> evolution. But what that means is that, you see, there is only one genus of uh, mankind that spread over the entire world, which also means that, you see, a large proportion of uh, people, wherever they find themselves there now, their ancestors have moved there. Yeah, because it's only one genus. Yeah, it's spread all over. Okay, so they every have a tradition of coming from f the east, from Yoruba territory, and then gradually moving to what is now Ghana and settling. There is uh, evidence in terms of uh, the traditions of uh, the Yoruba, the people in now, uh, in present day Benin, that used to be Dahomey, and also artifacts to actually establish the fact that that is true. And beyond that, there are also uh, cultural similarities. I always tell my, my students, if they watch Nigerian films, they'll find that Nigerians talk about uh, markets. They don't talk about, if I do Yoruba, Yoruba films, they'll talk about something that happened on the market day, two days of the market here. We also have that here, and that's also part of the, the linkage, and also our religious uh, beliefs and all those things here. So yes, uh, the Ebe now inhabit a place in which they are strangers, or they used to be strangers, but they are, they are now here. So according to the tradition, it was from Ketu. Now, Ketu is uh, the last of the Yoruba states. It's, in fact, it's the most westerly of the Yoruba states. And then it was from there that our people moved and then uh, stopped at uh, Noche. And it was from Noche that they actually came to inhabit their present home. As far as uh, dating is concerned, we assume that it's sometime between the last half of the 16th century and the first half of the 17th century. Again, there is uh, evidence in terms of uh, uh, archaeology, because we know when uh, uh, Noche was uh, created or founded, and it was from there that they moved. It was sometime in the 15th century, and they stayed there for some time. According to the traditions, a number of uh, kings reigned over them. It was one that was very demanding. They, because of claims about uh, the harsh conditions, but some of us believe that it was maybe he was trying to actually rule rather than just reign. So they decided that uh, they will leave. And then they came to inhabit what is now present day Ghana, and then of course parts of uh, Togo also. So that's how they ever came. Now the issue is uh, <coughs> was the place completely devoid of human habitation before they came? If there was human habitation, then how did they impose themselves on the, the on the people? Mm -hmm. Because in every land, as against uh, uh, other societies like uh, in Nigeria and even the northern Ghana, you don't have a several class. That's the one that were defeated. Mm -hmm. There's no social distinction in the population, Indeed. which meant, therefore, that there couldn't have been any defeat of a, a large proportion of people who, that were already there. So nobody overpowered. Overpowered them, you see, because if they, they have been overpowered, then there will be these uh, social classes here. But we don't find any evidence. Again, there is evidence in the form of uh, the cultural links between the Ebe and uh, Yoruba, as I said. <coughs> 
the Yoruba have a, a four-day cycle. The Ebe also have a four-day four day cycle, which is uh, market day, Ashigbe. Day after market day, the middle day, the day before the next market, and then you get the market. It's same same here, so we don't have here. And the basis to it is uh, very simple, that most African societies uh, have uh, a system of, uh, okay, lunar month. Okay. The lunar month of uh, 28 days. Now for a preliterate society, it's very difficult to actually keep track of events here. So you need to break it down, okay. 28, if you break it down, you can get uh, 14 and two. 14 is still quite here. Mm -hmm. So you end up having either four or seven or seven and four. Exactly. So we have four. The Europeans and other Africans, they have seven. seven. Yeah, so we don't have the weak one. We have the four day cycle. The FA have the four day cycle. So these these days that we have the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday, Joda, Blada, Kuda, Yaura, Fida, remember that Koshida, but these are not uh, traditionally from the no, ever. no, no, it was from the Akwamu that we got that mm. before our Sante can we be from it was from Akwamu. Mm. We don't have, we, as I say, we had uh, the four day cycle, not the seven day. Mm. So, in fact, that is why you don't find any chief, the old ones, having bearing the name of uh, the weekdays. It's only the recent ones, yeah. Mm. Because in those days, we didn't have weekdays, no. weekday names here. Yeah. Mm. yeah, we didn't have any weekday names here. Yeah. So, okay, they came and they found a place. If they met any opposition, it couldn't have been uh, very, very uh, serious, mm. okay. So they were able to establish themselves and then uh, constituted a new political system. Now, because of the experience they had at the uh, uh, Gokoli, they decided that uh, the heads will not rule, but they will only reign. What's the difference between the, ruling yeah. and reigning? Yeah, reigning is that, you see, you have to comply with the decisions of the society or the people. You cannot lord yourself over them. Mm. And then you're even subject to uh, dethronement. It's interesting that uh, uh, Professor, uh, who a German linguist, Westerman? Westerman said that uh, the Ever did not uh, <coughs> dethrone chiefs. But in the, in the chief list that he provided himself, that's one they are called Fiajeha. Fiajeha is an infinism for a chief who will be deposed okay. and you have to run away. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why? So, yes, yeah. So the point is that you see, Every chiefs were beholden to their subjects. Mm. They couldn't, they couldn't, yeah, because you could be deposed. You have to time. behave, otherwise you're Oh, very much so, because uh, when <coughs> you were enthroned, you had to give an undertaking to be by, guided by the counsel of your elders. Uh -huh. So if they advise you and you don't take it, they advise you don't take it, uh, they'll get up and say they will depose you. So therefore, our chief reign, they did not rule. They had to rule with, they had to uh, take decisions with the support and the advice of, of, the, of the elders and the total population also. So that's the difference here. Yeah. And again, the point about uh, the able succession is that uh, Although it was uh, restricted to individual families, it was not automatic. Okay, so, and uh, a person who is the first son could be sidestepped, and the younger son would be here. And in fact, the two can even be sidestepped and a nephew, because it depends on the quality of the individual. So it wasn't automatic that if no, you were it in was that not line, yeah. you would about, be the next uh, chief. So there's no nothing like uh, uh, automatic succession. Yeah, yeah, automatic. No, no, no not okay. not not really a political system mm. because everything depended on, on your personality. And even when we adopted parts of the account system, like uh, the war chiefs. Obviously, if you're not warlike, you can't be made the head of uh, the, 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 yeah. So there again is your ability. And in fact, it used to be at the battlefield that you were installed. 
Oh, I see. In the yes. middle of, of conflict, yes. of, of fight. That's when they make you the chief. Yes. But now that the, the wars have stopped, mm -hmm. that became hereditary in the families who were the last bearers of those this year. Okay. But normally it wasn't hereditary. So what, you'd be in the middle of a fight and then they, 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 they would... No, they would have watched you. Mm -hmm. They would have watched you mm -hmm. and say, okay, this person is stronger and then this, yeah. So the, if the vacancy is created, they, they'll uh, appoint you. I mean, I think it makes sense, though, because they want to make sure that you are battle-tested. Of course, yes. And they yeah. you in charge. Yeah. Just as you see, <coughs> for the regular civil chiefs also, they want that you're, you, you, you have the gumption, you know, mm -hmm. and then, of course, you, you, you behave properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, they could sidestep an elderly uh, person of the family and then go to see her. So it's not automatic at all. It is hereditary within particular families. But within the family, it is selective. Yeah. What other th things uh, of interest would you want to share with us mm. with respect to the elderly people? You've spoke, spoken a little bit about their governance and their yeah. chiefs. What other things are, that are of interest to societies that are working <coughs> today? Yeah, well, another very important thing about the area is that they came to inhabit part of the Ghana or West Africa where there were no natural, uh, there was nothing like gold and all those things. Natural yeah. resources. Natural resources, okay. So you had to work hard. You had to work hard. So they are very hard working. Because you can't depend on the just uh, what is in the earth. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So you either fishing or farming. That is here. There's again one dimension that I can we talk about. <coughs> Most people assume that uh, education is equal to literacy. But they're, they're, they're not so. So there was an educational system among the AV. In the first eight years or so, it was the mother and the grandmothers who actually educated the, the children to acquire the mores and then the culture of here. Both boys and girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. After that, then the children were split. The male children will be the responsibility of the male members of the family to give them a profession, to teach them a profession. Okay. So eight. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And by the same token, the women of the family would be responsible for continuing with education of the females. <coughs> so that by the time both of them are adults, they know their role. Mm -hmm. They know what they have to do and what they have to, uh, the expectations that they have to fulfill. When was somebody considered an adult in the, the old era? Oh, around 18 years. Okay. Ar around 18 years. Mm -hmm. You will find that uh, on the average, in the old days, the girls would be married of between 16 and uh, 18, but the boys will start from 20 to 25. 20 to 25. Is that, see, because you, don't, you did not just get up and decide to, you're going to, you have to be able to support yourself. Mm. And then the new wife that you're bringing in. And. Uh, <coughs> Was polygamy the norm? Yeah, well, this is what the, the point I was going to make. That you see, you 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 live you you live in Accra here, but you know in the Ghana the the the, the man women continue to live in their family, yeah. But it's not so, not with the Avi. Before you go and ask somebody's uh, hand in marriage, it means that you have a house or a home, because the marriage is a. Uh, to be consummated in the home, your own, not your father's or your uncle's, that kind of thing. Okay. You can bring your wife home. No, no. Your uncle's house. Yeah, whatever. and the wife cannot continue to stay with the, with the parents. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not ready, then she will remain there until you're ready. You're ready. ready. <laughs> yes, yeah. So these are some of the aspects of a, of a, of a, of a culture. And it's inculcated in the, the children. And as I'm saying, because we don't have any minerals. You can't just fold up your arm and say, okay, you get gold, yeah. It's only, re and uh, again, we didn't have uh, cash crops like cocoa. It's only recently that the northern area, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, we didn't have any cash crops as such, okay. So we got to work hard. So that was actually uh, 
entrenched in the educational setup that uh, you got to fend for yourself and, and your family. Yeah, that's the only way you can survive. And then, of course, uh, honesty and uh, discipline. Yeah, you got to you got to be very disciplined. What were the belief systems? Who did they ever believe in back in the day? Oh yeah, they did believe in the God. But at the same time, they have the lesser God because the 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 claim is that you see, the the God is too important and uh, <coughs> too remote to be approached by the regular ordinary people. So it's so we have the lesser gods, and uh, the interesting thing is that it's only it's the lesser god that we worship. Who was it? Some of their names? No. Who was the name of some of the lesser gods? Yeah. Well, well uh, because God was with Mark Sobolisa. That no, so what is uh, that is that that's uh, that's uh, the, the the big man, mm -hmm. the big man, Togo Suiza, because he created man. Mm -hmm. He has uh, the the genius. So he created. Uh, if you have, if you complete that, he was his wise. He's uh, he created uh, man with uh, legs and uh, and the arms and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the big god. Mm -hmm. uh, the lesser gods are to involved in the day to day affairs, okay. and they are the ones that uh, if you in the past they used to have uh, all these fetishes. Uh, uh, those are for the lesser gods mm -hmm. this year. But the the big the great god is uh, omnipotent, it, uh, omniscient. Uh, uh, it's all all wise, everything. Yes, yeah. Did he have a name? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mau. Mau. Mau, okay, yes, yeah. Okay. Mau. And Mau actually means that somebody that cannot be excelled. Uh, you cannot, yeah, yeah. Mau, you can't, you can't, you can't yeah. excel. Yes, yeah. You, yeah, it's very, yeah. You, can, you can't be. So that, that, that was the belief system. So we have the lesser gods uh, who, who, uh, who are worshipped. They are all over the place. They are supposed to be in charge of uh, the day-to-day -day affairs of uh, the particular society. But as I said, there are a number of them, depending on which part of it. And uh, some clans or families have their own uh, gods. Towns will have their own gods also. And then, of course, we have the the national god for the god for the entire uh, Anglo states, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not one for the entire, because you see, when the FA people came to their new home, they did not have one single political system. They were, in fact, in uh, the early part of the last century, it was recorded that there were as many as 120 FA states wow. in that small area. A lot of states. Yeah, 120. And some of them were just were single town states, you know. Okay. Yeah, but each was independent, mm. and that is because of the experience of Agokoli, that they didn't want to have any strong uh, uh, ruler who would be dictated to them. So uh, small, small enclaves will be independent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some, some of them. Independent republics. Yeah, some yeah. of them uh, two, three teams, uh, two, two or three uh, yes. towns, you know. And that's a whole state on its own. Anglo was the largest with thirty-six towns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, if you go in line to Peki also, they have a, a few. But otherwise, these are very small, small affairs, you know, and yet they are independent. They were independent. I'm yeah. curious about how uh, the ever back in the day kept social control. I mean, if you misbehaved, yeah. how were you punished? Oh, it was, uh, the, the, the sanctions were very severe. Sanctions were very severe. You, <coughs> first of all, you forfeit your rights and privileges in the family. Land was for the family, okay? And uh, when you grew up and needed land, you just have to uh, see the heads, and then we allot you. But if you miss it, you, you, you lose that chance. You have no access yeah, to you land. Have, you have no access to land. And then ultimately, you could be expelled also. If you misbehave, you are warned, and then you don't, yes, yeah, they, they expel you. They completely, as it were, you have a divorce. <laughs> the family divorces you, and then that's the end. Yeah, you go and fend for yourself. So discipline was very hard, and uh, because the idea was that uh, if it did not actually uh, come strong on the child, you'll be... <coughs> 
a vagabond. Mm -hmm. he, he, yes. And that you can. Uh, Jim Yes, yeah, yeah. Jim vagabond, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jim McClay, yeah, which means that you've not been properly brought up. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, it will bring shame to the family. So, that is where. You, from the beginning, the idea is that you want to be sure that the boy or the girl doesn't go up to become a disgrace to the family. Uh, is that capital punishment also for? Sex? Capital punishment was actually the most severe. The most severe is Tokoa yeah, this year. So this is the fifth. The most severe, state. yes, yeah. Um, uh, so, so what kind of crimes took you to Tokoa As I say, <coughs> crimes like. Uh, Going out the other people's wives. That was a serious crime. Okay. Oh yes, very, 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 very serious. Again, uh, disobeying uh, lawful order. That could okay. send you to come yeah, up and but it has to be persistent. Oh. Not just once or twice. It has to be persistent. If it's persistent, and they don't that. You just don't care about uh, obeying the <coughs> the traditions of the society. Yeah, and particularly, you see. Your your lifestyle will reflect ill on the reputation of your family. It was very important for you to oh, yes, family yeah. honor, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So in fact it's a family that is be more severe rather than the entire state there. The families uh, that are dressing them, so they want to discipline you and make sure that and again as well, if you're reluctant, you're not uh, ready to accept here. Yeah. So the they take you, send you off here. Yeah. And the last one is actually this Tokotonia. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That one, what was that it system? means, like you have to say, the going after other people's wives mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Very, very serious mm -hmm. indeed, yeah. Is that where they buried you up to your neck? Yes. By the beach? Yes, yeah. Okay. And then the bus will come and pluck your eyes and then, and then you die. Was it yes, a, yeah. for, uh, this sort of execution, was it a public spectacle or you, they just took you away and did it quietly? Oh, no, no, it was, it was done on the quiet, on the quiet, mm -hmm. yeah. Elders of the family, in fact, your own family will take you there. Your own family? Yes, yeah, because I have said you are disgracing mm -hmm. them. You, are, you reflect ill on them, yes, yeah. So there, it's not even the, you know, no, it's the family that will decide that you are disgraced so that they've got to dispense of. Otherwise, you might do the worst things, you know. So. Other people's wives, and then uh, sealing and uh, brigandry, those are the issues, the state that actually merited uh, Tokotonlia. But it wasn't uh, uh, done too easily here. Yeah. You really had to, to be a very bad person to merit it, but it was there. So most times it's more of a, a threat and a caution rather than something that was regularly uh, uh, executed, I mean, done. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. The institution of slavery, what, how was it uh, perceived in every society? Well, what I will say is that uh, <coughs> people did not sell their own members into slave trade, mm -hmm. in, into slavery, which meant that they knew that it was bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they did not actually know what happened to the slaves when they reached uh, the new world. Yeah. So they thought it was just a question of uh, getting rid of uh, somebody. Almost like a banishment. That banishment, yes, yeah. Get rid of you, yes, yeah. But they, they really did not know what became of the slaves when they are. And of course, uh, people had slaves themselves to work on their farms or to help them fish and that kind of thing. Where did they come from, these domestic slaves? Oh, some could be local. Uh, you know, people could go and uh, borrow money and uh, give their family members uh, to go and uh, ask a pawn mm. until they are able to repay. Yeah. By times, the family that uh, actually got the loan was not, was not able to, yeah, so it became permanent. Uh, permanent. And then, of course, uh, slaves from northern Ghana also mm -hmm. came down. Came down. As a result of war? Because of war. Yes, yeah. So, as I'm saying, the uh, people knew that slavery was not bad because they did not uh, enslave their own people, unless these ones uh, who actually uh, went against the tradition, that kind of thing you see. Mm. I'm really grateful for this uh, mm. brief history of the uh, people. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, is there any um, evidence to show 
where they came before the Yoruba time, because you, you, you've made a link to the Yoruba people, but... Oh, Ketu. Ketu is a Yoruba. In fact, yeah. as I say, it was the last of the Yoruba, so it mm -hmm. was the most... Uh, Westerly, yes. and then from there, then they began to move. Yes, yes. Yeah. But before Ketu, what, where were they? <coughs> well, <coughs> this gives me. Uh, they were part of a bigger society that could not be identified mm -hmm. as uh, separate. You know, it was when the uh, groups began to move out and began to lose touch with home that they began to develop a new identity okay so that is where when people talk about uh, linking themselves to civilizations uh, so many millions of years uh, i'm uh, surprised because that family would have been maybe two or three people mm -hmm. at the time if you if you okay let's take the event down i don't think the total population of in ghana is uh, over three million now, if you extrapolate three million over hundreds of years, the people that we are talking about, uh, that, le that uh, left Goche, they will have been just a few hundreds. Mm -hmm. They will not, yeah, yeah. So you will, be, you will have been part of a bigger culture. It's when you move away, and because you are distanced from uh, them, then you begin to acquire a new personality. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately you, you emerge as a new yeah. But otherwise, you're just part of a big entity, big entity. Very well understood. Mm -hmm. um, so now we can uh, segue into the story of the Hubert Chuchu, and, uh, and there's a festival now that has been yes, yes. Since, since 1962, it's been celebrated in Ghana. What is the history behind the Hubert Zan or the Hubert Chuchu Zan? Well, again, it links back to the point I made about uh, not very many employment natural in indigenous employment opportunities in uh, every territory. So over time, lots of uh, people went to, uh, outside Accra, Kumasi, Takradi, and all that. Okay. And as they began to go outside in search of uh, greener pastures, they were beginning to lose contact and linkage with home. So the whole thing was introduced in 1960 to provide an opportunity for them to reestablish those who go out to establish and also to educate the people about uh, the culture and their traditions. So that was why Hubert Chuchu was, was established. And then of course, it had uh, uh, material benefits also. Because people will come, not only uh, the people, but other people will come. The economy will be uh, <coughs> increased in terms of, uh, and more importantly, the culture will be embedded in the year, so the culture will not die out. Mm -hmm. That was by far the most important year. So it was an opportunity for, for the young people to be educated about their culture, the history and the tradition, and uh, to establish a link so that uh, other than Hubei they will be prepared to go home on their own once in a while. Mm -hmm. So those were the, of course, the financial thing also was there. It boosted the, the, the image of society that they also have the a national uh, uh, sort of like a homecoming uh, yeah homecoming so well, foreigners also will come and then of course the, the tradition was that you invited the head of state to come and then you see the opportunity to tell him your needs here yeah. unlike what happens now when the chief of uh, of uh, uh, Aflawu talked about the completion of then the the head of state said, you don't have any, uh, you don't have any right. Mm -hmm. uh, what, a right what other right can the chief have if they can't play to, he cannot play with the head of state to provide the needs of a uh, yes, yeah. So these are some of the benefits of uh, Hobeza, yes, yeah, that means, yeah. The story of the exodus of the Everest from watching yes, yeah. plays a, a big role in Hobeza, is that correct? Oh, definitely, because it is re re enacted mm -hmm. to remind the current population about the, what actually drove their ancestors away from their original home. Yes, yeah. So it's enacted and then, of course, uh, provide uh, uh, Reintegration of the entire society. Those who are living outside, uh, they will come and then 
they go to the ancestral home and see yes, yes. If you go there, and then you're you're ashamed by the quality of, <laughs> of the house. Then your it takes you to do something about it, you know. So there are all these uh, financial and uh, social uh, benefits of the home person. With Obesa is that you see, because it happens every year, it's becoming tedious. And uh, my own position is that is uh, if it could be staggered, you know, maybe every four years, once five years, every five, five years, years, or even if it's just two years, so yeah, yeah. you will have time to rest before the, the year because otherwise it becomes a, a bit of a bore, mm -hmm. sure. I attended the first one, it was just by accident, you see, because uh, that was the first one in 1962. My friend, Professor Nkunya, and I had just come down from Britain to do field work, and we happened to be around here. It was a very small scale. Now, of course, it's very big, and it's bigger and big time. So, in fact, it, it generates money. It generates money, and it provides uh, a bond between all the various uh, groups. So, so it needs to be encouraged there. But I don't think that it should be done every every every, every year. But that's my personal thing. Two years, ideally five years. So it to be very grand, you know, to be very grand, and then uh, almost like Olympic Games, you know. Yes. <laughs> or the World Cup. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that would be a position, and then. Uh, the various uh, groups outside will even compete to see who actually gives more benefits to the society. That if it's every year, you really haven't got time to mobilize. But every two years, or ideally every five years, this this will be my 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 plea. It is, yeah. uh, when I speak to non evers they can't understand why we have um, non evers We have tong. We have a Vedum. Can you explain these various, um, I don't know whether are they, are they subsets <laughs> of the other people? Yeah, Some well, it's, it's, a, it's because you see, the other people came and dispersed over a very line. So, lots of contact. When they left watching. Yeah, no, 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 lots of contact between the various groups. Okay. That was actually led to the emergence of uh, dialects. Mm -hmm. The language is one ever, mm -hmm. but what we have are dialects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because of the suppression of our time, okay. uh, the Tongu, and again, as for the Tongu, one uh, problem with them, you see, they had uh, the, a number of account people, Kwau, moving among uh, his here, and also with, with the with the. Uh, the, the inland that we call the domain. Yeah. They also had a, a kind of intrusion. So those are Peki? Yes, yeah, yeah, Peki area. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where you find uh, these variations. But the language, if you, if, in the textbooks, it's the same textbook that uh, mm -hmm. in every that uh, the, our people use, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the intonation, yeah. And as I said, uh, uh, local variations. You know, you know French? Yes, I do. Okay. You know the local variations in French. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And even a country Canadian French. Yeah. From. Even even uh, yeah. English. Oh. Even English. There, 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 yeah. 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 Tonal differences. Yeah. That's how they came about. But the language is the same. It, these are just uh, dialects of the language. The language of uh, this Anglo, it be Anglo dialect, Tongu dialect, that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's the same. Tongue would be the people from Mepe and uh, Swap, Slightly, uh, slightly. And Dume, from, yes, yeah. Yeah. By the river, right? Tong. Yes, yeah, Tongue, that's, 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 yes, yeah. that, and that's what it means, yes, yeah. Oh, okay. But it's essentially the same language, mm. the same language, yes, yeah. Mm. Do you feel that the Ever people feel united? That is always a big problem. One would have thought that. Uh, our experience in Ghana will have taught us the need to come together. So, well, I suppose uh, it's coming gradually, coming gradually. But certainly they're, they're not here. There's a competition between the various groups, you know. Some feeling superior to the others. I don't see the point in that anyway, but uh, yes, yeah. You trace it back to uh, the whole Togoland issue. Is that, is that, oh, that play a part? No, I, I, I don't think so. The, what is the result of that is that is it, 
because Togoland was under the Germans. And then when the Germans were defeated at the end of the First World War, then it was split between Britain and France. Now, France, okay, let's see. Britain and France were supposed to administer this initially on behalf of the uh, <coughs> League of Nations and later on the, the, the Transitive Council. Yeah. Yeah. But none of them did. Britain virtually integrated each portion of Togoland into the Gold Coast. And France even, even did worse. What happened in 1956, the plebiscite, was just, uh, if you like, uh, a formalization of what had been there before. If you contrast what happened in Togo with what happened in Cameroon, there, Cameroon was separated from Nigeria. Uh -huh. But in Ghana, or Gold Coast, British Togoland was part of it, and then French Togoland was also part of, uh, it was not really part of, uh, uh, no, it was not part of uh, Benin, that, Dahomey, yes. but it was separate. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that has made for some lapse of uh, regular contact. And then of course, poor communication also, poor communication. But I think it's changing. I think, I think it's changing now, you see. Experience, of the Ebe under the Ayadema uh, dynasty, mm -hmm. and then also the Ebe in, the, in Ghana under all the viruses that we had. She teaches that uh, there's a strength in unity, we should, we, should, we should come together. The only danger about that, you see, when people talk about it, then uh, there's a suspicion that they want to, they want to yes. disintegrate, get away, yes. move away from here. But that is not so, because uh, I don't think that uh, the FA in uh, Togo are faring any better than uh, we in Ghana. With the Yadema with dynasty, mm -hmm. I don't think they're fighting anything. So nobody will want to leave Ghana to move outside. But we should be allowed to appreciate the fact that we have a common culture and then we are the same people. Did, 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 what do you think about the whole Western Togoland um, problem that happened a couple of years back? Well, the, the, the thing was, they really do not have any a leg to, to, to stand on, you see, because I. <coughs> Study that that, that 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 problem. In fact, uh, the, I have a book. Yes, I have a book on uh, Togoland yes. East. Yeah, yes. yeah. People said that uh, the transition was only to last for five years. There's no such. I have all the documents. Mm -hmm. I have all all, all, all the. It, it, it's not so. And there was no, uh, if you like, uh, binding obligation on the part of uh, Britain to retain uh, Togo separate from the What Britain did was that in 1956, when it was clear that uh, the Gold Coast was going to become independent in a couple of months or so, mm -hmm. Britain said that under the regulation, it was supposed to administer British Togoland as a separate entity. Now, if the Gold Coast became independent, then there was no way it was going, that is Britain was going to be able to administer Togo, British Togoland separately. Because it's independent. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they were given the, the option mm -hmm. to either become part of uh, the future Ghana or beyond the oh, but the but Britain has said that it was not good yet. So there was a lot of uh, maneuvering by the British government to make sure that uh, the the <coughs> the voting when mm -hmm. it took place mm -hmm. would be in favor of a merger with uh, with here. Mm -hmm. And in fact, at that time, that was the best thing that could have happened because I have said Britain was not prepared to remain uh, in administration of uh, British Togoland. Mm. And again, British Togoland could not be part of uh, French because French Togoland was, uh, was no uh, 
example of a good administration that uh, people want to go to here. So the only option was that uh, British to Poland, yeah. But as I said, if you look at the situation in, uh, in Cameroon. Cameroon, yeah. But of course, they are also regretting now. They are also regretting now that uh, they joined the uh, French Cameroon instead of Nigeria. Nobody knows whether if they have joined Nigeria, it will have been any better anyway. But at least they will have been speaking the same language. Indeed. Yeah. But now, because they had the, Eng the English tradition, mm -hmm. and now they're in a uh, Francophone, uh, yes, yeah. And uh, this, they don't think that they, they are also human beings. I mean, you can have one head of state all these decades. Because of the people yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, you can't believe it. Yeah. Oh. So maybe, in fact, this is one of the reasons why Nkrumah's idea about African unity would have been, would have resolved all these problems, you know. So you think yeah. Africa first? Africa first, yeah, and then, yes, yeah, that, that would have resolved us, yeah. Unfortunately, as I said, he was rushing too fast. Mm. He was rushing too, he couldn't carry the along. people along with him, yes, yeah. Why do you think some Ghanaians, uh, when they relate with Eve, they, mm. they kind of think of them as, you're not from here, you're Togolese. <laughs> it's really difficult to... Part of it is uh, fear. You see, because uh, if, uh, we, we are hardworking, but we don't tolerate nonsense. Mm -hmm. We don't tolerate nonsense. And uh, my, I, I always say that my father taught me to respect, but not to fear. Mm -hmm. Most of us respect, but they don't fear. They will tell you their peace of mind, you see. And because they're hardworking, they're all over the place. They're all over the place. I, I don't know whether you remember <coughs> Bush last time, mm -hmm. when the Hebrew teachers were bundled to go and teach in Bronga Hafo. Do you remember? I don't remember that one. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because of a lack of uh, local employment opportunities, they, they had to go, yeah. And of course, most of them remained there. They've got farms all over. Mm. Yes, the, the Bush just said, oh, most of the teachers to go and teach here. Mm. Because in our part of uh, the country, it was impressed on you that because we don't have any natural resources, if you did not apply yourself intellectually, mm -hmm. if you did not uh, go to school, and you won't have any job to do. Mm -hmm. We can't all be fishermen or, or, or farmers. Farmers, or yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everybody applied himself to go to school. And after that, then you had to look for employment. Of course, you could be, couldn't be contained locally, so you had to move out. Yeah. And because people find ourselves, uh, if you like, uh, maintaining our posture, they don't like it. They want people who will go to them. But, uh, we are not brought up that way. Once you know that you are doing the proper thing and you can defend it, then of course, you defend it to the high. So, so, so that is it, yeah. That's my own personality, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, of course, of, of obviously, Eva is spoken in Ghana. Yeah. It's it spoken in Togo as well. Yes, yes. It's spoken in, in parts of Benin. Yes. How about the Western part of Nigeria, Badagri? It's, 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 would you have ever being understood there? They are, they are now the, uh, small, small colonies, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> You know, let me uh, just bring this in here. In the, in the mid-1980s, when this was very rough, UNESCO came up with the idea of publishing textbooks in single languages that are sp uh, spoken across boundaries mm -hmm. so that it will make it cheaper yeah. for the governments to be able to, yes, yeah. And they selected Ebe and Hausa. Because Ebe is spoken in, uh, or was being spoken in uh, Ghana, Togo, and a uh, part of uh, Western Nigeria, Benin. the small, yeah, yeah. And Benin also. Yeah. So that was the idea. Mm. And again, Hausa for the rest of uh, this year. Yeah. But then it was. What right, happened to the, the idea? It, it was torpedoed. Mm. Yeah. Who torpedoed it and why? <coughs> I was, uh, I played a very important role in that 
program, you know, because we thought that it was a good idea. And uh, I don't know whether you've heard of this man, uh, Mr. Badamusi. Yes. Uh, former head of uh, the GES, Ghana yeah. Education Service. Exactly, here. Badamusi. He and I were met at, uh, at uh, Lego. In fact, we, we were both in Convert Hall. Okay. okay. Well, Vandals. It was about but the was his time as a director general of uh, Ghana GS that this idea and he supported us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Immediately, but the Mosi was moved somewhere else. Then the new person just uh, killed the idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just stopped it. You had people coming from uh, Benin, Togo. We all met here in Accra. Mm -hmm. We devised uh, a syllabus that was going so. UNESCO will fund it and then it will be distributed in all the three, uh, three, three countries. Okay. What, sub what subjects? Everybody. What subjects? That was all the, the because the, fun the funding mm -hmm. was withdrawn, mm -hmm. you see, because mm -hmm. we couldn't get any support from the government okay. of Ghana. Okay. Yeah. Because the education service decided to uh, just uh, the new head, but the most supported us, mm -hmm. even though he is from uh, not, well, it's Nigeria and everywhere, but yes. from Northern, yeah. But, yeah. They just. Uh, Stop the whole thing. And that was the end of it. Yeah. The idea was to uh, 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 to help us to because those were rough. Mm -hmm. Those days were yeah, rough. The, uh, the were first rough. half of early, the nineteen eighties, you know, it's, uh, very rough. It was just help us. UNESCO was going was bringing the money. All that we needed was to agree and then uh, send a formal request mm -hmm. through the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. It was just uh, that was the end. That was the end. And that again is a reflection of the attitude of uh, a number of people to FAS here. They don't want to see them uh, rising up uh, or coming together because they feel threatened. They feel threatened yeah. Is there, uh, could they justify their fears by the fact that um, the architect of the very first coup d'etat in Ghana that was succeeded, that y was successful, y yes. was uh, Kotoka, who was an ever. Yes. And then you had uh, Mr. Rawlings, who is the most successful coup maker in Ghana. Also of ever stock, so it's like, wow, these people. Um, oh, I don't we, think this. You don't this, think so? I mean, well, well, even when we were in school, you know, the, that attitude was there mm. long before. Uh, before Kotoka and this book, yes, yeah, mm. oh yes, yeah. Even during the colonial period, mm. there's always that attitude. That. Uh, but did that uh, come to reinforce it? You would think. I mean, the events of '66. Of course, yeah, that that, that has uh, reinforced it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But you know the funny thing about Kotokati, this man said that he had a, he made a coup. His deputy, uh, what Afrifa. is his name? Now? Afrifa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you read, yeah, mm -hmm. read, he did not assign it. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kotokati did not live to write any. Yeah, I, I read in a biography of uh, of uh, Kotoka. Mm -hmm. He did not have any uh, thing to say about the role that he played. Mm -hmm. So everybody is yeah. But uh, when it comes to that's why every now and then you have the demand that uh, why should his name uh, be, be, on be, be, be on the airport? Yes. Yeah, what do you really think about that? I, actually, I don't know the justification for it, but you mm -hmm. see, some people had a guilty conscience mm -hmm. at the time. So this is why they decided, yes, yeah. You see, because <coughs> do you know that Kotoka's uh, children became destitute? They didn't know that. They became destitute. Even though they were supposed to be a fund, a fund, yeah, to pay for, no, they became destitute. When he died, yeah, that was the end. That, 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 that was the end of his uh, The children became destitute. I'll be wrapping up this interview uh, <laughs> pretty shortly. I mean, you've taken me on a very fascinating mm -hmm. trip covering centuries <laughs> um, about the other people. Yeah. And we have now landed. Uh, here in the 21st century. Uh, looking forward to the days that we will not be around, uh, what's, what, what are your hopes for the people of, of Everland? Yeah, well, the most important thing is that we continued with the tradition of uh, formal education. The only thing is that occasionally, when, 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 have you been home lately? Um, earlier this year, yes. Okay. You find school age children idling about. Yeah. So that's only the danger that I foresee, you know, mm -hmm. because I said that the only hope that we have is a uh, formal education. Mm -hmm. Because there are very few industries, even the salt, we can't uh, make it here. Salt would have been a very important thing for us, you know, but uh, we are 
So we, 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 we need to pay attention to a formal education to equip us, and particularly now that we are entering the digital stage. Yes, indeed. If you do that, you can find employment all over the place. Indeed. All over the place. We have our professionals all over. Your dad will have told you, in our time at Legon, that's why the small population of, uh, we consider 20% of the population. Mm. There are more of us okay. at, yeah. I did, as, as I said, I did my system at USC, it was the same. Because, you see, it was draining to your brain. That is the only future you have. Yeah, get an education. That is the only future. <laughs> so you took it seriously. Mm. If you didn't even go to school, then what are you going to do? Mm. Yeah. So for as long as that tradition persists, I think we have a future. I think we have a future. But we got to make sure that the new generation also appreciates the need to apply themselves diligently, mm -hmm. particularly acquiring formal education. If you don't have, you can, yeah. Even if you want to set up your own business, you got to attend a certain level of education before, yeah. You can have a business and then somebody else is signing your check for you. <laughs> <laughs> the fastest way to poverty. Yes, of course. <laughs> you clear the bank and then you also <laughs> fly <Take> off. <laughs> completely. So we need it, we need it. And uh, present day 20, first century, you need the education to survive. Mm. And in fact, even language, like you see, <coughs> I read uh, French, I can uh, understand German because I had to study German for my years here. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this is the only way we can survive. Yes, uh, openly, because then you open your mind to the culture and the, and the literature of mm -hmm. other societies. Mm -hmm. You can pick ideas from uh, other societies here, but then if, you, you speak only a way, or you read only a way. And even your English is faltering. You don't know any French, you don't know any German or Spanish. These are the world's languages. Maybe Chinese you, even yes, yeah. uh, Of course, Chinese, Chinese is coming here. Yeah. Except that the script is <laughs> different <laughs> or, or, or <laughs> But our people are there. Yes, yeah, so we have to be open oh, yes, and absorb yeah. all these, but still oh, yeah. yes, keep yes, ours. Yes. And they are coming. Even if you are going, they are coming. They are, coming. They are, they are here. So, so we, we need the, we need to inspire our youth that uh, they've got to follow us. The tradition that we establish that apply yourself diligently, secure position somewhere, and then you can contribute your quota to the development of society. Yeah, I send copies of my books to the to the schools at home. You know, just to inspire them Indeed. that okay. Indeed. But the, the two volumes that I have of uh, outstanding efforts. Yes. To look at the examples and, and uh, try to emulate them. I bought that book. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, indeed. It's a great book. Yeah, have you got uh, volume two? And, uh, I think I have to take the volume, but I have one of them. I think I have one. one. Okay, yes. I'll, yes. I'll give you uh, volume two. <laughs> I thank you. you. Thank you so much you're for your time okay, and yeah. for opening our minds to um, history, which is really important. I uh, thank you. Akbar? Yes, Thank yeah. you very much. Yes, yeah, yeah, Professor D. E. K. I'm curious. Okay. I know the D stands for divine. I, beg your pardon? I know the D stands for divine. Yeah. What is the E in the case that? Adam. Adam. Kobla. Kobla. Yes, yeah. Professor Adam, Adam, uh, Divine Adam Kobla Amenuma. Yes, uh, yes. Professor of, of history who has taken us into the fascinating world of the other people of West Africa. My name is Kafui Day. Hope you enjoyed it. Put your comments down below. Let's have a conversation.